continue. So it's Tuesday the 7th of April 2020. My name is Helen Myers and I welcome you on behalf of AWL London to another Tilt webinar. It's a series of virtual meetings to replace the annual real life tech conference which is normally held at the Ashcombe School and which this year was going to be generously sponsored by Linguascope, Stefan Dovon, but unfortunately it couldn't take place. It was also going to be co-hosted by uh, or really led by Joe Dale, so we're lucky to have him here. Um, so this webinar is um, to do with Microsoft tools, sharpen your Microsoft tools, and our presenter is Jane Basnett. Um, the session's due to run for about an hour. As I've said, we totally understand if you need to leave. Um, at the moment, I suppose that many of us feel relieved that we've managed to get through two weeks of online teaching and learning, and we probably took a big breath at the weekend. Um, now, depending on your circumstances, and everyone's different, um, certainly for those for whom this is all new, um, some are now wanting to take stock and plan for what is likely to be a continu continuation of this through the summer term. Um, so it's great to be able to draw on the expertise of colleagues who, because they've been at a school where all the children have had electronic devices in lessons, have been able to really be in the vanguard to be able to lead on using technology on an ongoing basis in their own schools. So some people have been living this anyway. Um, and that's been the case with our previous speakers. And it's the case with tonight's speaker, Jane Basnett, who's head of languages at Downhouse School. And she's got an enormous amount of knowledge and experience, which she generously shares. When working as part of a, a large organisation, it's important to think about the structures, about management, how to be effective and efficient amongst colleagues, and in the current climate to think about how we can be aware of what is realistic to achieve and what is not realistic to achieve. I've been really impressed by what I've seen people share in our recent Tilt webinars about the whole school adoption of platforms such as Google or Microsoft or others which has meant that individual teachers are not working in isolation, where you know, instead they can share the load um, and pupils just as importantly as parents can feel supported because parents after all now are pretty much like our TAs, aren't they? Co-teachers co really. So this evening, Jane will be sharing how her school uses Microsoft Teams and OneNote, class notebook, to work really collaboratively in departments and in classes. We've talked about it and we thought the first, the, the, for the first part of the webinar, um, we we're asking Jane to show us what Microsoft Teams and Classbook Notebook can do. Then when you've seen what is possible and if you want to follow it up, Jane has very kindly offered to stay on after the hour with you know, a real tilt extra time in the sort of match of the day thing of post-match analysis, I suppose make me sound as if I know what I'm talking about. But anyway, the idea then is we will talk more about the how. So we're gonna watch what can happen and then later on perhaps look in more detail if anybody's got questions about the technical side about how these happens and questions which may have occurred to you. And that conversation can carry on on Twitter with our hashtag uh, tilt webinar or any other hashtag to do with Microsoft, I suppose. Um, and also perhaps on the Facebook group which is managed by Catherine Chief of the Secondary MFL Facebook where we can also follow things up. So, um, because there really is, there's so much to get through, um, by and large as moderator, and this, we've decided, Jane, we've spoken about this, and um, I'll be moderator, I'll be recording the questions um, as they come up, um, but I'll probably raise them afterwards. And I draw attention to the fact this is recorded, so if you feel that you've missed something, if you need a bit of repetition, you'll be able to watch it again afterwards. Okay, so um, thank you ever so much to you, Jane, and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the session. Okay, thank you, Helen. That's a very um, thorough introduction there. So I'm going to crack straight on. Um, Helen mentioned I'm on Twitter, so if you if I can't answer anything tonight, I'm always happy to answer on Twitter. I'm at Basnet J, as you can see on my screen there. I'm a Microsoft in education trainer, and um, I teach, as Helen said, at a school in Newbury, uh, where we have, uh, we're a Microsoft showcase school. So we have been using, um, we've been using Surface Pros for three years now. In our first year, we, uh, Surface Pro, I should say, you get a pen and you've got your tablet 
uh, which is attached to a keyboard and you can take it apart so it's very versatile and in our first year with, um, as a showcase school as we were learning we the staff uh, undertook a lot of training here as you can see um, the Microsoft uh, education portal where you can do lots of training and learn all about the tools some of which I'm going to show you today so um, I think we'll put that in the in the chat somewhere Helen we'll put this information if that's okay Helen I feel like sorry uh, I'll keep my I'll keep I'll keep my mic on it was okay just, yeah, I was fine, typing sorry. so I'll do it so we'll type it right. all in yeah yeah so um this information will be available so you can get online to microsoft and do your own training and it's just a series of videos and quizzes and it really helps you to learn about all the different tools and you need thirty thousand points to get yourself uh, to be a microsoft in education expert which seems like a lot but you can grab some free ones here by taking this code so that's um that's me. I should say I've been teaching for 26 years. I've always embraced using technology. Uh, and then when we, went, when we went down the route of the Microsoft Surface Pro, I um, was very happy to go down that route because I can see a lot of value in it. So what I'm going to show you today is a couple of areas. I'm going to look at Teams. Um, so if we go straight there, Teams is where we start as, a, as an organization. Uh, our organization sets up our teams for us. And you can see here on my left-hand side, all of these teams that I have. So I have my own classes. These are my year sevens, my year eights, my year nines, my year tens. Okay, everything with this pink icon that I've created. Those are my teams that I have created. And I've got some teams here um, that I share with my colleagues. So I'm gonna come back to those. But I've also, I'm a member of the teams of all of my department. So there are 20 people in my department and they will teach a number of different year groups and I'm a member of their teams and equally they're a member of my team. Um, and there's a lot of benefit in that. You know, I can see what's going on in their lessons. They can see what's going on in my lessons. Um, I can help out as and when necessary. And I can see the chats that they have in their team so what you can see here is my year nine team and you can see some chats that i've had with my classes i can't show too much because obviously with gdpr issues but you can see that i have some chats and i've set up some assignments and i'm going to talk about that later and equally i can see my colleagues chats so you can see here i can see that um my colleague here has got three little bits of activity that have gone on recently so these red dots tell me to have a look and see what's going on and i'm going to just show you now here where i've set it up in my notebook so this is a chat it's just going to take a moment to switch this is um a chat let me take you there there we go so i followed the i followed here the dot I've clicked it and so this is Miss Gross's uh, year 10, year 11 class and I can see if I open it up, I can see she's been having some chats. So this is from the recent lessons, remote teaching, you know, dear Miss Gross, the video's not working. So she would have been dealing with that and maybe it would have been helpful. Uh, you know, maybe I can have a look at that and have a chat later. Did everything work okay? Were there any issues? Could I help with that? I can see here where um, Miss Gross, Bettina has set up her scheduled her lesson a team's meeting for the lessons and she's reminded them to comment in the thread because some of our students are in different time zones and they have to watch the lessons later and so in this chat as well the lesson the lesson recording will be held and so any student can go back and look at that at any point so that really is a, a big benefit of of being a member of other people's teams i mean the other benefit if i go back now to teams being a part of a team of teachers. So this is my year seven teachers. Uh, everybody who teaches year seven is in here. Everybody who teaches year eight is in here. Everybody who teaches year nine is in here and so on and so forth. So if I just show you what we've got in our year eight, you can see 
we share, so we do use SharePoint and we put all of our resources in SharePoint and that's all really organized just as in the way that you would always share, you know, in previous years. But what we also do in here is we share Quizlets, any conversations, how far have you got, how, you know, if we haven't managed to meet up for a weekly meeting. We also um, put, upload documents that may be useful, comment, you know, recent comment here uh, about a learning pack that somebody's uploaded from good old uh, Steve Smith's French teacher website. And we've, uh, we've commented on that. It really helps when we've got newer staff to guide them as well. So we can uh, take the lead, help them, show them the lessons that we've done and um, make sure that everything's going well for them. So anything can be uploaded here, as you can see, Quizlet, Kahoot, documents, PDFs, Excel spreadsheets, and we can have conversations. So it's a way for us to keep in touch. Now, um, as I mentioned, you can set up, you can schedule your team meeting, so your team lessons. But the next thing what I thought I would show you, and you may have noticed, uh, you may have noticed here um, that, where is it now? One second, if I go back to my, my class you can see that i've set assignments and we use this to set the assignments okay so i'm going to talk you through how we can set assignments because it's an amazing tool i simply would click on assignments and you can see here this is my year nine class you'll see the last few assignments that i've set and you can see here and i'm going to come back to this you can see uh how many of them have turned it in uh how many of them i can see more details as well i'm going to look at that in a minute but i will say now that i've never really used the function of turning it in and all the things that can be used with uh, grades and insights uh, so well before but now courtesy of covid19 i'm going to be using it much more so what i'm going to do is to show you how to create an assignment so simply click on create and I've got a number of options. I can click on from an existing assignment. Now this is great, of course, and this is where being a member of somebody else's team and knowing what they're doing is really helpful. So now I know what I'm looking for. Um, I think I can either just scroll down, which is actually what I may have to do because I'm not sure I can remember. I'm gonna choose my colleague, Alex, who's the head of French. He always sets some good stuff. So I'm, and I know exactly what it is I'm looking for. I'm going to choose his, I am going to choose his, if I can find it, his um, task. Here we go. So I know that he's set a good translation activity. So here's a couple of things that he's done. He's only set two assignments recently, and I'm going to choose this translation in your blue book. So I'm going to click on that one. And then I click next. So it comes up here, you can see, um, hopefully you can see everything. We've got, it says it's his assignment is already there. It's all his details, translation in your blue books. He's the instructions that he gave, copy down in your blue books and translate the attached sentences. He's already attached the sentences. Now what he didn't do was give assigned points, but now that I'm aware, which is something I've learned in the last couple of weeks, that if I assign points now, then I can grade it and teams can keep all of that information and provide me with a lot of insight so i know that we're going to use the usual marking rubric so that's out of 12 for aqa and then i am going to set the date the deadline okay so let's just say a couple of days after we get back and it says here assignments will post immediately with late turn-ins allowed well no late turn-ins are not allowed so i'll change that and i will make sure that late sign-ins turn-ins are not allowed click done and then i would click either save and i can uh, post it later or i would click assign but i'm not going to do that because they've already got homework my year nine and i don't think they'd be happy if i set another one so i'm going to discard it and show you the other ways to create an assignment i'd say it's slightly like not as quick as usual possibly because we're going through um we're going through zoom so the next way so that was from an existing now i can create my own assignment 
So I'm going to enter the title, which is test assignment, enter instructions, and I can bullet point and I can highlight, do question one, question two, use your blue books, and I can highlight that. Now I can add resources if, for example, on this particular occasion, I know there is something that I want them to use from our class notebook. And I'll show you um, shortly how to set up a class notebook from Teams. So I will go to class notebook. And I know that I've got something in my library, the content library, in my topic section that I want to share with the class. It's called En Pourre Sortir. So I want to take this class notebook page and I'm going to attach it to this assignment. And I want, so when I then share this with the girls, I teach only girls, so apologies for that. When I share this with the girls, I want it, it will be, it will be distributed to each of their individual class notebooks. And I want it to go into their writing section. So I'm going to click on the writing section and then I will click done. So this prep, this assignment is going to go to their own class notebooks. And I know that there are 10 points for this assignment. And I could also add rubric. So um, for this, I could click here. I could add I could add a rubric, upload one, as long as it's an Excel document. Or I could create a new rubric. Here is how it's laid out. And if I go back and click add rubric, I went back too far, sorry. If I click, here's a rubric I created for a different year group. It's GCSE oral discussion mark scheme, but it will look familiar to some of you. It's two elements of the uh, AQA mark scheme for the oral. Um, communication, range of access, range and accuracy of language. And I simply uploaded this. I, I simply copied and pasted it in. So yes, it took a moment to do it, but now it's there. I can use it for many different um, assignments. And then I would click attach. And that is, uh, that is the rubric uploaded. So the, the students know the mark scheme. In fact, the points for that will be 20. Um, I could also go, um, I could also add a Quizlet or another link from an online source. So go to add resources. If I wanted to add a link, I click on the link there. I go to my, my Quizlet. I'm going to go for a Quizlet on this occasion. Hmm. It's going to open, hopefully. Yep. I'll just simply grab the link. There it is. Copy that link. Go back to my Teams and paste the link in. Control V. My text to display will be uh, preparation, for example. Click attach. And there they would have their vocabulary preparation sorted. So um, one other thing that I can do in terms of assignment is I could go to Kahoot. So I've got a Kahoot I like. I could either copy the link from Kahoot, but what Kahoot have also done, I'm just gonna choose this A-level one. So I think my year nines will have a bit of a shock, but hey ho. I click assign and then I click uh, create new. Uh, it doesn't matter about the date for the purposes of this. Click create and it offers me the opportunity to assign this to a team, Microsoft Teams here. If I click on that, and ask to create an assignment. create an assignment. I choose my class, I can simply, obviously I've got all those teams I could share it with, but I'm gonna 
type in my class, French, J E M E. Oh, don't know my names in my class, French, upper four, J E B. There we go. Enter the title, the usual way, and the instructions and the points, etc., etc. And then I would click assign. So that's another way of creating an assignment. But here we have the assignment I created, which will distribute a class notebook page to all the students individually to their own notebooks. It will distribute this vocab preparation, and I'm going to change the dates, do all the things I want to do, and then I would click assign. There we go. Now I'm going to discard that because obviously I don't want to, I do not want to give that to my students. I'm going to show you the final way. I don't know whether I should be here and looking at the questions or not, but okay, I'm going to click um, on. We will we decide at the beginning because I knew you've got loads to get through okay. and it would be lovely to see what it all is. I'm very, I am answering any questions I can. Otherwise okay. I'm copying and pasting them for us to look at later on. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. So then the final way I would create an assignment is quiz. So I'm going to create a quiz. Now this links automatically to Office forms. So part of you know, uh, the Office 365 package is Teams, Class Notebook, Forms, Sway, Stream. There's so many things and uh, we'll see a bit of Stream later on. So Forms is the thing that I'm looking for. Uh, I'm going to choose Le Futur Proche. Where are you? There it is. Click on that. And if I click next, it automatically uh, fills the points in. It's 15 points because it knows it's a quiz I've created and it's got 15 points in it. And then I would do all the usual things, assign it to the French upper four, yes. Uh, the date, change the date, late turn is not allowed, etc., etc. I think um, that covers all the assignments. But I really like the way it adds these points. I'm going to discard that. Now, what I'm going to do now is show you what the student sees, which I can't do in here because it will take you to um, their page. So um, I'm going to take you to the class notebook that I've got here. So the student's view is this. So here's a task that I've created for them before. When they click on it, they will open it up and this is what they see. So they've got their speaking homework, uh, it's got the detailed instructions. It's really detailed on this occasion because it's the first time they've done a flip grid and I never had a chance because of the way term ended to explain how to do it, but I'm pretty sure they'll be fine. And it's, I've uploaded the points and I've uploaded, uploaded the rubric as well. And they would simply click on that flip grid. The rubric is actually within the flip grid. So from my point of view as a teacher, um, I, get really good um, information when I set an assignment. So when I go to assignments as a teacher, I could click on here, student view, and um, you can click on student view here, and then I would see what they see. But this is my view. So this is a, home, uh, a homework that I set for the students at the end of the term. It's, it's, a, it's a holiday work, basically. It's the flip grid piece of work that I wanted them to do. I can see immediately who's not even looked at it, and that's the ones that say not turned in. I can see the ones who viewed it, and I'm not expecting them to have turned it in at this stage because, um, because it's uh, just started, you know, I mean, I've only just set it. So I'll go back to a previous uh, homework that I set. Now, I'd just like to remind you that I, up until this point, up until uh, remote teaching. I've not been using the turn in function as much, but I, from now on I will be. Um, so for this particular assignment, I can see straight away there are seven that need to be graded. There are seven I've graded, and the seven that need to be graded actually have not been turned in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I took this snapshot, um, I took this snapshot after this particular conversation. Originally, there were nine. There were nine assignments not turned in, and it was due on the twenty sixth or twenty seventh of March. So I was expecting it in. So what I did was I was I was able to sort as here. I just sorted under status, and I took the girls' names, 
and I wrote them a little message. A number of you have not completed the task. Please, can you do this? Here's the link again. And so I, I sent them the link again and they would automatically get an email just as whenever you set any assignment or put any post in any any chat in the post they will get uh, an email telling them you know your teacher has contacted you these are the things you need to do you need to look at teams to see what's been set so i emailed them i i put the post in in here i put the post in the chat and the girls all got an email and then i discovered this is really important with microsoft when you see these three dots there's always you should always click it because it just gives you so many options and when i clicked on the three dots there was this lovely one here share to outlook so what i did then was i just emailed the ones who hadn't done the work so not only did they get an email from the channel from the team channel they got an email because i copied i put their names into the chat and then they got another email because i decided to forward the whole chat via outlook but i just really wanted to make sure the work got done so then I was able, in fact, what happened was a couple of them then did the work straight away. And then you can see here, I put the marks in. That doesn't auto fill, I'm afraid. Um, it, although it may do in quiz, I'm not sure if you've assigned a quiz. So it's, it's auto fill. I've put in these marks, these grades. Now, the benefit of um, having these grades is that I can have, after a while, an overview. Now remember, I've not been using this feature, but I've tried to show here on this page what you could, what the possibilities are. So if you imagine all of these had grades, you know, I could have them all filled in because, it, you know, my mark book is all filled in, but because here, because I've not been pushing the, the students to turn in and to, you know, to use the functions, but I will be from now on. And I've, um, but I, you can see the potential, you know, I would be able to see who's always late, who's not turned it in, who's, I can see the girls' marks straight away. Um, so that takes me to coming back to here. So the grades option is just here. Now this leads me to insights over here. So I'm going to click on insights. And there are a number of things that I can get from that. And again, of course, I can't show you the full functionality because it's not something I've been using up till now, but it will be something that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use because I feel that it could be an incredibly powerful tool. So if I click on insights very quickly, I need to, it's taken a while. Okay, so the reason I quit, I clicked quickly onto average grade is if I click on the digital activity, it's a, it's a new um, tab actually, it will show me all the students' names and it will show me uh, when each student was active during the day. So here though, I can look at the average grade and at the moment it looks like there's nothing because it's set for today, but I'm gonna go for all time. I can see my students' average grade and remember I'm a member of the all these other teams on the left hand side here so i can see the average grades for all the other classes so i can as a head of department I can really keep abreast of, of what's going on now i can also see how late students were remember i've not been using the function so it, it doesn't look good um 65 percent of them are on time 11 percent are late and 24 percent are missing <laughs> And I can actually go delve deeper and see how they've done for each piece of work in terms of the, uh, the percentage of getting working on time or late, or missing work. And here, the real shameful one is the average time for feedback. Obviously, it's not a feature, as I say, I've been using, so I've been, I've been doing a pretty poor job. My average time for feedback is 45 days. Um, I'm, normally pretty, I'm normally pretty good. Um, I hope you can see the, the power of that tool. Um, there's this also communication activity and that relates to the posts. It just tells you how many times a student has commented in the posts and so on and so forth. I think that's everything about Teams that I want to tell you about um, because uh, unless we talk about, if I, I'll just quickly show you how to set up I can move this box at the bottom as yes, I can. If I was going to schedule a meeting, I would quickly 
I would quickly click on the meet now. Type in French. Maybe um, the date, which would be I think the 22nd or the 4th. That will be our next lesson. I don't want to meet now, but I do want to schedule the meeting. So I will schedule the meeting. They will automatically get an email about this. I'll put the right times in, of course. I might write them a little note and the note would normally be, please make sure you sync your notebooks before the lesson. And then I'll click send. But I'm not going to do that uh, at the moment. Once I've clicked sent, I can open it up again and I can set the parameters for the meeting. So I can make sure that I'm the only presenter, um, that their microphones are muted, uh, and, and those kind of details, which I think are important. And that's uh, then on the day, the meeting would be in the chat. I would click on that, open it up and the girls, they can join before me, that's fine. And I don't mind because then they can have a chat, see each other. I mean, it's quite tough for them, I think. So that is Teams. Um, and I'm gonna move on now to how I've been teaching remotely. So when I started with the teaching remotely, uh, I think, you know, it's been a very steep learning curve for everybody. So my first lesson did not include, um, did not include any sort of video. So what I did was I'd start my meeting in Teams, as you saw, we'd have a chat. I might use the chat function in Teams to a few starter questions, you know, a few translation of key vocabulary, or I'd ask a question and get them to write the answer in the chat and then I would come I came to this page and I talked them through I would share this page with them and they could all see this page and I'd say right then I want you to do this and I want you to open the PowerPoint which I've put I've inserted in here and I'll show you how to insert a document and a PowerPoint in due course they would do the activities as I've outlined here and work through and we would meet in teams. I would ask them to mute their microphones and then I would do some, the, 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 the glory, the benefit of class notebook is that I can check on any of the students page and I'll show you that later and see how they're doing. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And they would work through the page and we would go through the answers together. But I felt that was kind of lacking in communication from me. So what I did next was I tried an audio. I inserted audio. So if I just move that out of the way. So in, on the class notebook, when you insert, you have record audio and record video. So what I did for this class, this is the first time I tried it, I clicked, I recorded audio. So I'm gonna just play that for you. And if you, um, I recorded the audio, I inserted it. And then what the students would do is they'd go to their page, which says playback, and they'd make sure that this C playback is highlighted. So then when they click on this, they will actually see what I was doing on the page when I recorded it. So I'll just play that and you can see, hopefully, play. Okay, girls, so today we're going to work on, to continue our work on listening to the posh talking about what we're going to do at the weekend, what we are going to do at the weekend. And what I would like you to do, please, is to start here with Le Fichier Okay, it's the sound file. And you are going to, vous allez remplir, you are going to fill in, vous allez remplir les trous. So each of these boxes need to be filled in with an appropriate verb. And they're all verbs. We've met, we've met all the vocabulary for today. It should be okay. And you can see there are a number of gaps. So listen and you can stop and start the file or the sound file as you wish. Once you finish up, and I will pop in and out of your notebook. So I, so I don't know. It should move through. I, I hopefully you saw that it clicked on the, uh, it highlighted on the arrow here. Hopefully you saw that. And the other thing is that anywhere through here, there should be a little, there we go. Can you see if I hover over where I've written, there's a little play button. And if they click on it. The next thing we're going to do 
okay, will be to have a go at this verb and. Now you can move on to this. So they can actually get the direct instructions for each little section. Because what I was finding was that they were asking me questions, perhaps individually, but the same questions at various times. And I didn't want, I, I wanted them to feel independent and they could crack on. And really what I wanted, I didn't want them to be asking me questions about what they wanted to do, but I wanted them to be asking me questions about language learning. So that's an audio, um, audio file. But what I also did was video. So this is the same thing again, but with me there in the corner. So here we go. Hello girls. Okay, so for today's lesson, I'm obviously going to be in Teams. Um, you have everything you need. Um, everything you need is on this page. What I want you to do is to start here with the sound file. Écoutez et remplissez les trous. So here is the sound file. You can see now it's going to highlight these gaps all the way through the dialogue. And it's only vocab that you've met before, so it shouldn't be a problem. And I very kindly highlighted the first letter of the words. So it should be okay. When you it's really rather odd. I think it's because we're going through Zoom, but normally these all highlight, all get lit up as they go through. As they listen, whatever I've written will, will um, be highlighted so they know what I'm talking about. And again, with the video, as with the audio, you can click play and hear specific advice for each section. So that's the video and that worked really well actually. Uh, then I tried another way, which was I videoed my, I, I created my page in my class notebook and then I screen recorded my page. So the girls would come in, I, we would do the usual thing, we'd start in teams and I'd say, okay, I've done you a little explainer video at the start of uh, of the page and they'd know what page to go because we normally we date the page they know where they are working so they would come in and they would click on this link and this takes us to microsoft stream one of the other functions of office 365 one of the other apps they can watch this in full screen so um, try and do that it might be a bit slow right, here we go hello girls so um, today we're going to learn about animals, les animaux, et les couleurs. Now you may remember that les animaux, that écoutez et écrivez le nouveau. Okay, there's a little sound file. You can you see that. You'll hear me. Listen. So you can see as the video goes on, the girls can actually see where I'm writing, uh, explaining what they've got to do, highlighting it all. So it all kind of joins up really neatly. Hopefully that makes sense. So that was also really successful. My final way of doing it, I did this um, in a PowerPoint. I created an exp explanatory video about uh, basic adjectives. And so they came into the lesson. We had our chat in Teams and then they went to the video. They clicked on the link and again that opens up in stream so it's um okay i'm going to do a little description now of um some grammar so the thing so i do some description of the grammar and i use highlighters i'm talking all the way through it i'm using highlighters i'm explaining the grammar Oh, I pressed pause. To... Actually, what I wanted to do was press mute. So you'll see as I go along, if I move this along, you'll see how I highlight it. I'm talking all the way through. Now, the difference with this one was that I joined it up with a form. If I just take you to about here, take the video back a tiny bit. Because I am talking about feminine things, two of them. Now, I don't know if you can see in the bottom right hand corner, there is a little tab and it says open les adjectifs rvr so i'm going to click on open les adjectifs because it takes them directly to a form and the form is gonna take time to open i think here we go it's coming and the form is obviously about adjectives, about everything they've just learned in the video. 
and um, they've done adjectives before before you all think I'm really mean and setting them a test on something they've only just uh, only just um, met they've met it before so um, they would then answer the questions click on the right answers I may put some open-ended ones as well click submit and then they continue to the video so, so they carry on watching the video I do some more explanations and then right at the end there's another five question form for them to fill in and they would fill that in and there we go and submit that so if I continue to video so I have been working I suppose on it has been a very fast evolution on teaching remotely as it has been for all of us I know that um, so I've mentioned all along that I would open teams we would meet in the team I would have scheduled a meeting I would ask my students to mute their microphone we would they would get on with their work and while they're getting on with their work what I would do and I'm going to show you now how I do this um, is I would go to their notebook so on this occasion um, it's these guys here I'd go to their notebook and I would click on class notebook so I actually it's made me think seeing the notebook as it is like this that last week of course um, Sandra showed us her OneNote. She, Sandra uses, there are two different types of OneNote, so it's really clear, it's, it's important to, to explain. Sandra uses OneNote for Windows 10, and so the view here is that all the, the file dividers, all the folders are on the left, and then the file dividers are immediately there. I use OneNote 2016 app. I prefer that. I'm just used to it. I think the important thing is you choose the one you like and you stick with it. Um, and it, it, you know, it always um, it works perfectly for me. So I will in the lesson once we've started in Teams and they've watched their explainer video and they know what they're doing. Then I will, while they're doing work, I will have a look at their work by clicking on the review student work. So on this occasion, it's Les Animaux Chez Moi. And I know that I want to look at this page, the 27th of March, Description d'un Animal. But if I click on that, of course, we'll get all their names and uh, so it's the same old issue. So I'm going to show you over here, cancel that. Reviewing student work. I can, then all their names appear. They're all greyed out here, but all their names are there. And I can click on each of them and go through and then with my pen. So as I've done here with Ali, you know, I've gone through and, and I've said to her and I've then at this point, I've spoken directly to her. I muted my microphone and said, now come on, Ali, you know, je n'ai pas, you know, je n'ai pas does not mean I do not like and had a conversation and uh, she's had the opportunity then to correct it. So I find that incredibly powerful I mean it's like being in the classroom being able to walk around and to correct and to help so this is the way I find that I can make teaching remotely work and to, and to be the most to have the most impact for my students okay so the next thing I suppose we ought to look at is um, setting up a class notebook if that's helpful uh, Helen is that you give you a little Give me a little uh, yeah definitely i didn't know you're going to do that and someone asked about that so that's brilliant thank you fine well i unless there's any more on the teaching remotely i think i've covered everything but mm, we'll come back to that and I'm sure you'll thank have you questions. so in teams helen and i have got a team somewhere right at the bottom so i'm going to set up a team for helen and i so it is possible and class so normally it's for the people within your organization but it's if this is going to work because i've checked so I would click once my team is set up and, I, and the benefit actually I should say of having it all in one place is if I go back to my upper four um, we can also work share documents here so I can share in here there's this grammar revision you can see there that is available for them and they can open that and copy it into their own folders or into their class notebook or anywhere they want 
but on this occasion we did some work collaboratively in class it was a four by four grid i we did some uh, dictation and uh, i think it was at the beginning and some people hadn't arrived or there was a sports match or something and so we did some dictation and then they would a they zoomed in on their own i can't do it because i've not opened it in the app but they zoomed in on their own square and they answered they, they did the dictation and then we zoomed out again and i could show that on the big screen and they could all look at each other's and i maybe would pair them off and they could correct each other's if there was a mistake and so on. So that is the benefit as well of having a team. So if I go back now to my team with Helen. Um, Helen, here we go. I'm going to click on class notebook. So this is how I would set it up. Set up a OneNote class notebook. I could choose one that I'd created already, but I'm not going to on this occasion. I mean, the benefit there is I'm saving myself a lot of time if I've set one up that I'm really happy with. But I'm going to choose a blank notebook. It comes with a collaboration space, which I think Sandra talked about really well last week. Content library, which is like um, a section where the students can take things from. It's like a library. They can take it. They can't edit it, they can't do anything with it, but they can then post it into their own notebook and it will have student notebooks. I'm going to click next. I don't want, so in each of the students' notebooks, they would have a section called handouts, class notes, homework, quizzes. That's not actually the way that I do that. Um, from This is now our second full year of teaching in the classroom with the notebooks. There are four years who use the notebook and each year we get better at it, but we actually have the grammar notebook. So I would change the name of that. We don't have homework. We have quizzes. Whoops, quizzes. Oh, it does already exist. Yep, silly me. And we also have important information. So this is what each student would have. All right. um, it doesn't, it's important to note. So what you've got here by student name is a group section. These are just sections. So I also want to create, um, I also want to create a group section, but you can't do that in this, in this um, from team. So then I would click create. So I'm discard that because I'm not going to create it, but I am going to show you the team um so the student view of a class notebook then the student view would be like this they'd have the grammar section and then they would have all these themes which i have created myself so i'm going to show you how to do that in my own notebook so this is my view i can't go a stage back because then i get across the top i'll have all the students names and actually, I just wonder if I can show you that. Yes, I can. This is a class notebook. This is the class notebook view that I would get. So it's got the collaboration space, you can see. It's got the content library. I create this later when you open, you click on the class notebook tab, manage notebooks. And that's when you add teacher only. And then for each girl, they've each got their own folder. And then there's a drop down list here of all the girls. Um, so if I wanted for each girl to distribute a section group, so what I've got here is a section group. This is a section, and lots of pages. This is a section group within my section group. So these are all the topic areas we will study this year. Well, actually there'll be more, but this is so far. Unité 1, Unité 2, Unité 2. If I, which I will want to do now, I will want to create a new topic, a group section, and really inventively, it's going to be called Unité 4, so new section group. And I'm going to call that Unité 4. 
and then I will right click on that. So I've got my Unity Catholic. I want to change the name, I'll right click on it, rename it. And I probably will because I want to give it its full title. Once I've created that, I want to create the same thing in my student's notebook. So I go to new section, new section group. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to call that Unité 4. And I'm going to click create. And that will then be pushed out to each of the student notebooks. Um, and then from that point, I can distribute pages. So I'm going to show you how to distribute a page. Within my Unité 3, I've got this page, which I really like, and I want to share it with my students. I simply right click on that page, click distribute page. Unité 3, because that's the section you can see that I've got this in, Unité 3. I'm in Les, I'm in, uh, hello, Les Animaux Chez Moi and I'm on the 27th of the 3rd, and I want to distribute it to exactly the same, I want to distribute it to exactly the same section, Les Animaux Chez Moi. I click on Les Animaux Chez Moi, and all my students will then have this page. So this, um, what I should show you, obviously I showed you all the teams. So what I want to show you now is when I open all the notebooks, these are all the notebooks from all the teams. And I might not have opened them all, in fact. So down here, I've got open other notebooks. So I can see work that's going on. So if you're looking at seeing, you know, uh, supporting a colleague or that they should be able to uh, see what you're doing, then they can come into the class notebook and they can see everything that you've done. So these are all my notebooks. But this one here, JEB Teaching, if I just take you back a step, these are all my year groups. This is everything already you know, everything that I do. So for example, this is my year 10. Today I updated it. So these, so next year when I teach a new year 10, I simply right click, move or copy and carry the whole section over to my new year 10. It just saves me a lot of time. And yes, I may need to adapt the page because they may be at different levels, be a bit faster, be a bit slower. I don't know. But I've got that option. Um, now, going back to the presentation, once you've got your pages uh, set up for your students, and you, I've shown you the student view, what I thought I'd do is show you how to insert a document. So inserting, oh, uh, inserted a document. Sarah French raised a hand. <laughs> I can just see there. Um, inserting a document is simple. You, there are a number of ways you can do it, two ways. You could either go to your folder, which is what I'm going to do here. I've got my downloads or wherever you've got it from. I'm just going to drag that over. I'm going to ask to insert it as a printout. It's coming. It takes a little moment. So once that is embedded and stuck on the page, my students could open it by clicking on the link here and they could type on that document. And then when they closed it, it would be their document. As long as I'd shared and distributed this page to my students. If I wanted them to write on this page, I'd need to set the picture as a background, which I'm gonna do now. That is now a background picture and I should be able to write on there, which I can. I can type on there, type on here. So if your students can't write on there because they don't have that functionality, that's fine, they can still type on it. So all key messages conveyed. Yes, all conveyed. There we are. Um, so that's how you insert a document and pretty much anything, insert a PowerPoint, um, I think I always find it best when you're inserting a PowerPoint to insert it as an attachment as opposed to the printout because then it takes up many pages. And then when I want to distribute that, like I showed you before, I would right click distribute page. Now because I'm in my own notebook here, this is the one that I use, this is like my, this is like my master notebook. If I wanted to distribute something from here, 
So let's take this. There's something in my uh, in here, left fit. I'm going to distribute this revision theme. Uh, right click, distribute page. I want to distribute it to a different notebook. So I'll go to cross notebook. It then gives me a choice of notebooks that I can share it to. Of course, it's going to give me all of my notebooks, but I want to, I want to put it into this one. And I can say exactly where I want it to go. I want it to go there and I want it to go into the fit. And then I click copy and that page is copied over. That, that is how I manage my own master notebook and sharing with the the um, notebooks for each class. So finally, I think we've got a, I mean, I, I think that's time, isn't it? I'm not sure, but I have got a few other little tips if people are interested, I don't know. Yes, please, as many tips as possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. So um, something that I've, um, you know, this is all, it's all, it's a steep learning curve. It's been a steep learning curve with the remote learning, but you know, I've, and I've used things in the notebook before, like tags. So when you're on the home page, um, you normally get tags, but I don't know what's going on. Ah, there we go. So I normally use to do, and I, I do my to do lists, or I use this, I use this little tag thing here because, you know, do exercise one, do exercise two. And that's great because the students love to go, oh, yes, I've done exercise one and I've done exercise two. But there's much more power in these tags than I realized. So what, I've, what I'm going to do is I'll just delete that. I'm going to take us to um, my GCSE class. I've got a particular page right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got a tag that I've created called remember for later. And I really want them to remember this key useful structures. So I'm going to click remember for later. It has now been highlighted as a tag. And what I can do, and I've done that for a number of pages within this section. So this is something I've only really considered as a, you know, it's quite a powerful tool, I think, uh, a useful tool for the students and for me. It's only in the last week or so that I've realized what this function is really there for. So if I click on find tag and I should go down to click on tag name, my group, my tags by tag name. I've got at the bottom, I don't know if you can see, so I could do this page, this section, this section group, all notebooks. That gives you a lot of notes, something I did yesterday, last week, but actually I just want from this section. And here is my tag, remember, I highlighted it, it's called remember for later. Here they are, these are my remember for later tags. And I click on them and it takes me to all the useful vocabulary that I want for this theme. Here we are, some useful adjectives, we're talking about festivals, extreme, and key vocab. I can definitely see myself using this as a key vocab thing. I think there's a lot, of, there's a lot that can be done with these tags. Then the final thing that I thought I would show you were two little things actually. So in the class notebook, part of the class notebook, sorry, next to class notebook, there's a tab called learning tools and immersive reader. Now I've set all of this to French. If you've got a, um, a student who wants to hear it, or if you want all of your class to hear it being read out, you know, as a, as a, a homework, click on Immersive Reader. And this is such a fantastic tool. The Immersive Reader will open, here we go. I can change the background color. So if you have students who need different background colors, and I certainly do, um, and you can change the font and you can spread the words out. But you can also ask Immersive Reader to read it out. And because I've set the language to French, it does a great job. So here we go. Trois points à nage le weekend. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? Décider le temps de chaque phrase. 
Tu arriveras à quelle heure demain Il y a deux jours, j'ai joué au basket pour la première fois. Okay, I think you can see the benefit of that. Now, you can't write on this when it's in this, when it's an immersive reader. But what I would suggest is a great activity, if you're working on verbs, is you could say, what I'd like you to do is to write down all the verbs in the text. So they would write down, arrivera, j'ai joué, je regarde. I mean, it's a separate activity. You could ask them to split it up into the different tenses. Then they can check, see how they've done by clicking on verbs. And as you can see there, all the verbs have been highlighted. It does the same with adjectives. I think the color of my page isn't helpful. So if I go white, no, even that's not very helpful. If I go green, maybe that's a bit better. Um, uh, sorry, yellow. So if I click on adjectives, you can just about see it, but it does highlight it. I don't think I've chosen the right color for the background. So that's how you could use part of the immersive reader. And there's also, you may notice here, dictate. Now, normally it works for me in my OneNote 2016, but something's gone wrong. So I'm going to show you how dictate works in um, the other OneNote, because for some reason it's stopped here. Really simple. You click on French France, then you click dictate, and you perhaps have written something. This is, I found this really useful because one of the things I haven't been able to work on is their pronunciation. I mean, I try, but you know, group chanting doesn't work quite so well. So um, let's just see if I can find something that they could read. Oh dear, can I find anything off the top of my head? So. Well, let's do, um, actually, if I just go back up to, to the animals, that would be the best bet, I think. Here we go. Uh, list of animals. And in fact, I did do this with a girl. I did do this with a class, and it was fantastic because they could see how well they were pronouncing words. So here I go. I'm going to start at uh, number three. So, un poisson, une souris, un cheval, un lézard. Ah, where did it go? Oh, sorry, I'll start again. I'm going to do some of them incorrectly. Stop that and start again. So I'm going to start here, hopefully. I'm going to do some of them incorrectly because I want you to see how it will write. It will not write it correctly if, if it's not pronounced correctly. Un poisson. Une souris. Un cheval. Oh, I got it right, can't believe it. Un lézard. There we go. You can see how, I think it's getting a little bit too clever for its own good because it started to, it, it worked out, cheval, which I'm surprised about. But you see how I pronounced the E at the end. Un lézard. I said un lézard, it added the extra E. So I, I think, you know, that there's definitely some use for that. Um, and so that's it really, I think, unless there are any questions, and I'm really happy to, to answer any questions. Jane, that was amazing, absolutely amazing. I think what we've got to do is if you could, um, um, not all of you now, just open your mics and we're just going to give Jane a massive round of applause. <laughs> we are then going to have extra time when she's going to answer as many of these questions as she can. So really, Jane, fantastic, absolutely okay. amazing. Thank you. It was so nice to see so many people here, and there's so many still here. I'm amazed. Yeah, it, it's really, really good. Um, you can see all of the lovely comments there. There have been lots of comments throughout the time. Um, Jane and I had decided beforehand that we were just going to let her go through, power through, because we knew how many things she needed to do. I've got three sides of questions here, so you can imagine that had I stopped for every question, we wouldn't have managed to cover all of these things. But our idea now is that we'll have our extra time. And for as long as Jane has, can stay awake, <laughs> can cope and um, perhaps we'll start going through the questions and if we don't have time to go through them all we can have another extra time because I know Jane you've been ever so generous and said you love helping but just enjoy looking at all these lovely comments I'm chattering away here but it'd be nice for you to see all these lovely yeah, comments nice. from everybody thank you so much it's so very kind of you I hope it's been useful and that people oh. get something from it you can see and you could see throughout yeah. how people were finding it useful and 
yes, I mean, this is going to be a resource that we can now look back at and you know, follow it. I, I just hurt myself there. We can look back at it, we can look at it, and then we can stop it and then try it out on our screen. So, and although, yes, Microsoft does have little help videos, which are very, very good, I think it makes all the difference to have someone who's in our situation. You're in a school, in a secondary school, with the constraints that we've got. Um, they're really good. Um, yeah. And, oh, Alex has said perhaps we could have an NFL tutorial to a team. I had wondered, I mean, I'd actually wondered with the, the Association for Language Learning whether we could have a team. Because oh, you can see. obviously have massive teams. I tried to go to a webinar last night, which was um, an American, a US one, where they've got a yeah. cross-state team. So, yeah. Alex, lovely idea, yeah. I think it's great. a great idea. Yeah, Share right, we'll, do, we'll just do that. And the idea started here with Alex Bowers. Very good. <laughs> um, now, I'm wondering, and Joe, perhaps you can advise on this. I was thinking possibly now I might stop the recording for this and then start it again for the extra time. Or should we just carry on the recording as it is? So, Joe, you tell me because you um, are going to be uploading this. I think I think just carry on, Helen. So we, I think that, because actually, in that way that everyone can then see the whole thing in one go. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that would make sense. So that's okay. Okay. So I mean, the only thing I'd ask is, you know, it could be that people do need to get away from the screen for two minutes or something. Jane, are you all right for carrying on? I'm all right, but are you okay? yeah, I'm fine. I'm I've got my water here. So. Okay. Well, I think probably what the best thing might be to do is it probably if you're you may still want to share your screen because you might want to demonstrate things as we go yeah, through. Yeah, of course. Um, so I think we'll do that. I'd ask people now, perhaps, if I just go through the questions and if I ask people perhaps not to add supplementary ones now, and we can just concentrate on these questions. But if things occur to you, or yeah. or you could in the chat write what occurs to you, and I've yeah. got that as a record. But if you don't mind, if we'll just concentrate on this so we can get through as many as we can. But it's not that we're ignoring you. Is that is that all right with everybody? I think we'll see see if this works. Mm. Um, and I can't always remember exactly who asked the question but we'll, um, we'll find out. So, and by the way, people don't have to feel that you have to say you're going, you know, we just totally understand if you need to go. So uh, first question was, how do you avoid um, possibly the feeling of being overwhelmed by the number of teams you're part of? Right at the beginning, you showed us all these teams you were part of. Okay, great question. And in fact, I made from one of the teams we've got is um, Downhouse Staff Inset. We, um, where we give comments to each other and help each other out. And one of the things that I realized early on, once I'd become um, a member of so many teams, because we, I mean, I am always a member of many teams, but it became even more necessary when this current situation came along, because, you know, if somebody got ill, I was going to need to just know exactly where they were with their teaching. So I had to have all of these teams. So this is fantastic. Uh, thing up here on the three dots remember I said those three dots I think I said they're gold dust they <laughs> always have so many things that you can do and it's called channel notifications so to start with I was getting loads of notifications you get little notifications that come up on the right and I basically set my um, I just turn things off look all new posts off and I only have it now here I can just, I just, I might, it may come up here in the activity, but mainly it's here. You see, I can see that there's something new or if it's darker, I know that something's been said in there and then I have a look. Fine. And so then I don't feel, I only look when I need to. And I'm obviously most interested in, um, you know, so there are any, there are some colleagues I know I can just say, you know, I, I just let fly and I don't need to worry so much about them or I can go and just nick some of their ideas, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think later on there was a question for someone um, about pupils. Are they do they have the power to turn off notifications and not hear from you? That I'm not so sure about. And because I wasn't so sure about, you remember I showed you. I don't think they can turn the notifications off. But mm. because I was un unsure about it, when I discovered, like I showed you here, um, uh, did I? Where is it? Have I opened? Oh, I have. Okay, so when I, if you bear with me my teaching one where I put all the presentation stuff. Um, my presentation, where are you? Presentation. And I remember I showed you how me being in charge, I was able to post in the channel 
and then also email them so that way i just made sure they had it all mm -hmm. but also because as i say you know i haven't used teams the turning in and the assignments as much as i will be doing now because i'll often talk through face to face the prep and then and they will understand and then they say will you put it in teams because that's their reminder so i put it in teams and that's how we've used it up to this point but now it's going to change obviously yeah and that was another question later on as well almost is there a danger of children being flooded with mails if every time they haven't done an assignment they get a a mail and someone said would they perhaps miss an important mail because they're getting so many regular mails well i think um that I mean, that's a possibility, I suppose, but I think that most of them are good and do their work. Yeah. And, you know, I imagine I it's, yeah, it's a little bit like, you know, when you send slips, don't you? And actually, if they get loads of them, then there's a problem and someone yeah. else deals with that. They They'll be picked so. up and, yeah, somebody will help them right. out with their organisation. Another question was, does it remember your login details like a browser would to access websites within OneNote? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So when I log in to Kahoot, it will just, uh, it will automatically, uh, will it open? No, it, I mean, if I logged into Kahoot, no, I'd have to log in again. Yeah. Okay. Any of those, yeah. Right. Have so I'll go through. We have got three sides of this, and at the moment I've only just started okay. side one, so you could, you know. I'm all good. Uh, sorry about this. Um, right. To do with the setup, um, I think this is particularly Laura was asking about this. To set up a team, is it only an administrator who can do that? No. So I told you at the beginning that the school administrators set up these teams, but because um, because of the way our timetable works, when they set up our teams, they don't. We often have a situation where the students will have some set. We do setting. I know that might not be very PC, but we set, and so therefore students are moving around all over the place. So I set up my own team. Mm -hmm. I set up, and, and as you saw here, I set up this team with Helen. From outside of my organization so yeah and I'm imagining that must be some sort of setting in the organization because um, I know that for example in my school we we couldn't until someone had switched a switch almost to allow that mm -hmm. to happen so um, I don't to be honest I don't know how I managed it and yeah. I didn't actually <laughs> create Helen so I don't know what would have happened if I had and someone else asked how does the student know that they're in a team Do they, they get, get notification? notifications yeah okay and and then um so what they do the very first time the first few lessons they'll go to office 365 and in off if i show you the office 365 view they go here office 365 this will open eventually with all the apps one of the apps is teams they'll click on teams and then they'll have their list of teams that they're a member of mm -hmm. great um we then went on to assignments um, and this again was Laura saying once an assignment is set can the resource be amended yes so as I showed you because I was trying to show you the power of insight tool I decided to go back to an old assignment and see if I could amend it I think she means so that, that once, once you've set it. yeah I think her idea is once you've set it to the children and it's in there yeah oh, that's yeah, right. yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So I went back. I can actually show you in this team, I think. So, yes, it's Laura who's who's still here saying she had issues with deleting it and replacing it. You can delete. I don't know if you can delete, but you can definitely. Um, it's going to open. It is going to open. So if you see here, this one, come on, VS Animal, I actually mm -hmm. set that ages ago, before, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year, but... Yeah, you can see assignment details have been modified. I just modified right. it on Sunday. So you can. So it should should be possible, Laura, from that one. Um, right, when you were talked about Kahoot, um, someone was saying, uh, I teach high school to EFL students. Can I generate email accounts for any student specifically for integrating a team? I don't, I don't I, understand. I, no, I don't, I'm afraid I don't understand that. But, so actually, I'll have to go back and find out who it was. Um, okay. Can you do a Kahoot if the teacher is not sharing the screen? You can do a Kahoot if the teacher is not sharing the screen. And you can also now do a Quizlet Live. So I'll go back to Kahoot and I will show you what to do. So you get a Kahoot that you like. It's really good, actually. It's really clever. And you choose your Kahoot and you say play. So... Um, let's try this one. Uh, click play. 
you get two options teach so that would be if you can still do that in a virtual classroom i would share my team and i have done this and it's really successful they love it and um and it's just a joy to hear their excitement mm. <laughs> all over all around the world i love it yeah. so i, I the, uh, the questions will be on my screen and they'll have their mobile device probably and they'll do the answers on there but if you can't do that you click assign and you assign and you click create and what happens then is they it's coming hopefully they then will do the kahoot and if others are doing it at about the same time so you could say you should all start it at this time they'll see the other score although they won't hear the others nearby or anything they'll see where they are on the podium and they'll see how they're doing in relation to the others if for example, Helen, you did it um, at three o'clock this afternoon, and then I did it at, at seven o'clock this afternoon, at this evening. I would see, I would see where I am in relation to you. So it's a really clever little mm. bit of kit, I think. And I know that now um, you can do Quizlet Live. Um, you can also do Quizlet Live. We're getting so much it's out of this webinar. <laughs> this was. This is new. Here we go teams i haven't tried it yet students compete in teams and that is if you are able to share your screen and you can play the quizlet live um remotely that is really good fun they because they shout to each other through my screen they're all shouting i've got the answer i've got the answer no it's this it's that so that's really exciting or you can play individuals. I've not tried it. Students compete against each other individually. I'm not quite sure how that works, but they've mm -hmm. Quizlet have rolled this out really quickly. So yeah, that that's it brilliant. That's good. If we just go back, I now do understand. Um, Eric is asking about if he wants to create um, a team in Microsoft when his school doesn't subscribe to Microsoft and whether he should create emails. I don't know the answer to that. And I, my understanding is that this is really something which is for organizations who subscribe to Microsoft, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, the whole idea is really meant to be that this is a very safe environment where you know, all of your managers will be able to see what you are doing because um, sharing, creating emails and that sort of thing is, is difficult. Yeah. So Eric, I think there, it is a question of persuading your school probably um right next thing we went on to forms and somebody asked whether you would demonstrate how the form part is created i don't know that might take a while it may be that you want to do it just another section or are you going to mm -hmm. quickly yeah that'd so be great. i was in my microsoft office there's forms forms you can embed pictures you can embed um you can embed video whatever there's so oh here we go i just did this the other day you know watch the video and explain you should be able i just embedded that from youtube in fact what i'll need to do if i just show you add new and i think i'll do a choice so remote teaching is easy <laughs> true false i mean obviously the answer is false. <laughs> I mean, you, it's up to you. I mean, I'm just thinking of something. So you put the points in and you'd say, yes, it's required. And you can do other ones. So, um, so choice, you could say, which of these are spelt correctly? And you could put a number of correct answers. So, and sha, let's do an incorrect one. And sha, and leza. You like your lizards, don't you? Lizards, don't you? Right, so it's the animals in my head because we've just been doing them. <laughs> and the reason I didn't read un cochon d'inde or un chien for the dictation is because it thinks it's rude. So <laughs> the answer true. there is to, oh, hang on a minute. I want multiple answers. Mm. That one's correct. Mm. That one's correct. And that one's correct. And there obviously will be three points for that. Yeah. I do you know right at the beginning, this is a form. When you go to forms, Am I right that you select whether you want a form or a quiz? Absolutely. So the well, one we're looking at the moment is a quiz, isn't quiz. it? Quiz. Yeah. A form is a different thing. A form is what I would use with my department 
to say where should we go to the pub on Friday? That so means. I think it's probably quite good knowing that difference that if you're doing something where you want to generate something which will get a, a score which then goes into your assignments and your grades then you'd go for yeah. quiz. The form is really good as getting feedback on your lesson. I just know I insert that now I say this this is after two yes. weeks of teaching you this. <laughs> I <laughs> always I always put in a form um, at the end to say how did you find the lesson and what did you find okay, easy. Okay that's good. So this is what I, this is a form one I've done before. Okay, you know, so language tastes. Lady Lavinia has thanked us for the forms tutorial. Thank you, Lady Lavinia. <laughs> I know Lady Lavinia. No, there that's lovely. No, that's a really good responses. example. Yeah. And you can and see they, how fast they took. Yeah. Yeah. Forms are great. They are lovely. I don't always find the colours intuitive, but it's, it's good. Right. We then got onto posts and questions that we had about six questions on posts. Can they disable? Can the children disable posts? No. No. I don't think so. Um, um someone said what would i use a private channel for i think you must um yeah so um if you want to share something just with one student you would yep. create yep. a private channel i mean yeah I, I have created a private channel with a student i can't remember mm -hmm. how i did it but i'm sure and that answers know. because someone was saying if, if a student asks a question are there options to ask the whole class or the teacher privately so that's your answer to that as well is it yeah so you'd create a Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, because post is where you'd have your chat, but a channel. So a channel, hang on a second. Um, I'm looking at my department. There's a private channel there that I created in the MFL department. I don't know why. We must have and there are posts in a private channel. So yeah, you could do that. You could you do that. Lovely. Um, is there a way to prevent students from writing in the chat during a team meeting? Um well, Actually, someone here did say, yes, you can mute. So someone who uses it thinks you can. You can definitely mute them speaking. Right. I don't know that you can mute them from the chat, but then I right. wouldn't expect them to be writing in the chat when I know that they're working in the notebook. Right. So it's not okay. it's like classroom management, I think. And then someone asked the question, how did you create the little pictures in front of the channels? These? Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, it drove me nuts to start with when I just couldn't work out which one mine was. So I think it's the three dots. Manage team. It could be that. I may be wrong. Yeah. Manage my team. Oh, no. There we go. So those are all my staff. More options. Edit team, I think. And you have all these pictures. They're all going to come up in a minute. There you go. There we go. That's how Lovely. I do it. That's great. And yeah. by the way, the business okay. about disabling chat, Louise Ballantyne said, yes, you can disable chat. So Louise, if you want to turn on your mic and we'll talk tell us how it. to do that, that would be great. And while she's doing that, we can go on to the next one. Well, hi, I can't oh, tell you how to do it because I can't remember how I did it, but I have done it for two All right. because okay. I have two very difficult classes. <laughs> ah, <laughs> okay. okay, so it's worthwhile looking into that. We'll find out. Right. Yeah. Thank There's you so much, Louise. Somewhere. Thank you. Yeah, these. I love the way it's gold dust. We always think of those three dots as gold dust. Yeah. I know we have the, those other things are waffles and or hamburgers, mm, but this is gold dust. Um, right. Then we went on to talk about grades and the questions of: Is the grades option on Teams or OneNote? And it's Teams. Grades option it? is in Teams. That's right. How do I get the grades from Teams into OneNote? Presumably, that's where someone's wanting to um, form so the children. In grades, um, I don't know if I can show it here. There is, you can export the grades to Excel. And then, you know, if you want it, in what? I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure of the question because yeah. I would export it and then I don't know what else. Um, I suppose perhaps it might be saying, how do the children know what they got? Oh, well, Possibly. they will be able to see um they will be able to see their mark when students view let me see if i can see it um hang on a second because I, I expect that was why the question was probably asked so if you look here when i graded it they will see on their page and i don't know how and i could look but i would have to post a picture later because All right, just to know them. i would be showing names and things like that yeah. and i'm pretty sure that's probably the reason for it then yeah. we went on to talk about class notebook um it is the oh yes hiker asked whether when you 
annotated the marking on the notebook did that go into the grades book and I said no is that correct no that is right, correct okay um someone was interested to know do you personally what are you doing about using physical exercise books are you moving away from them or you know how, what do you want to do I know that Sandra last week was talking about how she uses everything on the on the tablet what about you I don't like to do everything on the tablet because imagine everything is on the tablet your resources are all on your tablet and it's quite a small screen now Sandra last week she had an extended screen she docked her surface and it then linked to a big screen and I have that at work and I have that when I go into classrooms but at home I just have this small screen and so do the students you can split your screen I mean you can create two class notebooks I'll show you I'll show you this little whizzy tool so um, if I go to home, if I go to view, because actually I have got two notebooks here. I don't know if you can see one, two. Can you see that? If I go mm -hmm. and I say new window, it will give me, so I have now got two windows. Watch what I do. This is, I mean, it is possible. I do have students who do work like this, but mm -hmm. personally, so they'll have their writing that they're going to do on this side, on the left, mm -hmm. and they've got all their notes on the right. But mm -hmm. I find that just so small. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So what I prefer, and I, uh, and most of my classes, my, the class I find hardest, the year 10s, they don't like, some of them want to write everything on the notebook. I like them to have an exercise book. And in their exercise book, they write grammar notes, they write really useful vocabulary you know the structures and things mm. and they write their essays and translations anything where they will need to use the resource i.e the surface and the num and the notebook um that they need that in front of them then they have their exercise book and then they can use their resource which is in front of them yeah yeah i suppose it's just in these days at the moment we're being forced to try and make it that everything is on the notebook but for you ideally you would have a mixture yeah. but, but you've defined you're making a definition as to why you're doing that and what you're putting in each each yeah. one from the and it's a decision that we've made as a department you know we have a similar yeah. layout across all the languages and we try we try but we understand that pupils do like to work in different ways you know so we're not totally uh, you know we're not yeah. totally yeah tyrannical about it i mean another question that came up from phil i think any advice on how you can simplify things for lower level learners um he teaches refugees and migrant workers entry level two only and with low level tech skill, low level tech skills but has been asked to use teams as his vle um, well i mean i think it is intuitive and i would say do everything together first mm. that would be my advice and and to and to see it as part of the learning process and you know that it's not don't let them go off without having done it all together and just go and only do the same thing for a few weeks and then introduce a new function that's how yeah. I, I suppose a lot of us at the moment because we are suddenly doing this we're being forced to do even the training online yes. at a distance but that's where i think the examples you showed us the way that you video yourself explaining things and doing things yeah. that could well be a way of doing it that is useful i think yeah I mean, that, that's where i did most of the videos was for my younger classes because i knew they would struggle yeah i've just noticed a message from gordon's ipad suggesting that you know you could take a photo of the work in your exercise book and upload that into the notebook for you to And so some of my girls who like to write do do that mm. so that's great it's a good idea yeah. um right what have we got here um yes someone asked if you're going to show a class notebook and you did right in google there's um a google doc that enables group work if needed and I'm just aware that we didn't demonstrate collaboration, but that was something that Sandra demonstrated yeah, last week. So I think did. probably to that person, I would say, watch, you know, we, we looked at what Sandra had done and deliberately designed this to be something to complement that section. But so also look, I did show the, 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 in files, the document where they could all work together. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that would be the answer. Um, we were asked, can you insert a ready-made audio file from a, from a course book into 
notebook yes. and you can you can insert anything can't you yeah, yeah, can yeah. they can the children record spoken answers and upload them yes yeah they have these options they could video themselves and they could record themselves yeah someone said does setting work in teams make sense if they don't use one note how would they hand in work and how could yes. you mark it because they would work i'll show you if i can go to teams they would each perhaps have a channel they could either have a channel across the top or they could just upload into the file section i could have a folder for each student and they would upload their work i would just make a new folder in here with you know each mm. child's name a folder for per child and they would upload their work into that yeah that's great um right there was a lot of excitement and alex has left now and I think possibly we need another session on just on streams because I know that's something that Joe was suggesting that you you know we do mm. some time with you um, because you were asked how do you create the video that sort of thing I mean do you think really that's probably something for us to say let's have another webinar to show that yeah so how did I create the video so I did the video in PowerPoint and yeah I can show that mm -hmm. yeah so that's and then um, someone's asked do you use the transcription feature in Microsoft stream um, is it live? Can you ask them? Because well, I've that seen... was someone who said that works fairly well if the audio input is clear, I found out recently. Was that Phil? Some, we could find out who said it. Yeah, I have seen it. I, I don't use it, but I could. Yeah, so that's we'll find yeah. out who it was and we'll ask them to do it. I think it might have yeah. been Phil. And Susan says, yes, another webinar on stream. And I think that would be fair because, you know, we are up to 9.38 now. And um, yeah, we know we could do that. Um, pens, do you use a digital pen to write on these whiteboards? That's from Heike. Da -da. Da -da, yeah, there you mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Someone said, is there a way to auto mark forms? Yes, we've seen that now, haven't we? It that does it that all happens, you. yes. Brilliant. Can no. you demonstrate streams? Yes, we're going to do that. Um, the review, someone said they missed it. How do you do it? You showed that twice, so I've said, you know, look at that again. Um, live lessons, what's your po school's policy regarding safeguarding and live lessons? Well, so if you recall, so um, you may have noticed, firstly, my line managers also are members of all the teams. So, you know, they've got our back. We can blur our background. Participants can mute their video, those kind of things. Yeah. And we record lessons so that, um, you know, I mean, that's the best way, I think, you know, so there's, there's evidence yeah i mean i don't know if that and that would be yes i mean i think that and the sandra's last week was the same wasn't it where you would yeah. record it um and oh yes this was a question where you've you've already answered it you can review student work on one note whilst they're working on it someone said that they're finding that they're having syncing issues with that have you found that um that will depend on the student's individual bandwidth at home yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, question about having them pair off. I thought someone was asking, and I said, oh, yes, on collaboration, you can give them pages, but within Teams, can you let them go off into breakout rooms? You can. You would create a channel. I think you would create a channel. Hello. I'm trying to create a channel. I've done this before. No, I'm adding an app. I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm, I didn't mean to add a tab. Here. You, um, wait a second. You would go to here. More options. Add a channel. And you would, in the channel, you would, ha you would pair them off. Oh, very so you good. Would have, yeah. And then within that channel, they would you know upload their powerpoints or their speaking files whatever they wanted but can they speak to each other um, i don't know if that was the question no. but is that the question no mm. that would not be possible whereas in zoom here yes there's a possibility isn't there of having and we're going to see that on thursday but i mean i suppose my concern there is how does the teacher monitor what yeah the whole thing about safeguarding might come up there might do i don't know yeah Difficulties. We're near the end of the questions. Even I know this, there are we've got lots of things we can follow up. Um, if I edit a page from content library after I share it with the students, do they see the changes? I've said no because 
Those no. days doesn't it? They'd have to go and get another one. Such a pain. Don't share it. <laughs> Until you're <laughs> totally certain. And this, I think, is good news. Someone said, can I pick content from a colleague's notebook and share with my students? But yes. your colleague has said, yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? You can do that. Ah, this one. Why do you set the Word document that you've embedded into the OneNote page as a background? I think that's a good one. To, I think that would be good to... Um, Let's have a look at the one I embedded. Show, yeah. Which one did I embed? I swear I've got... Well, how is it? I always end up with both. Okay, fine. So um, if you just bear with me, where was the page where I embedded? I embedded a document. Is that class notebook? Inserting documents. So um, let's just rub that out. And let's set pictures background. I think it's harder for them to write on I mean, you can it's maybe it's harder for them to type yeah it's harder for them to type on a document that's not uh, set mm. as the background i think it is possible all right i'd thought it would just stop it no it's not it's not possible you, you no, can see i'm yeah. trying and it won't do it i would have to type to the side of it yeah so that's the answer really isn't it yeah did you show me something where you had to make you had to fix something so that if there was a change you wouldn't move what they'd written from oh, yeah. the background so, yeah i did so what i had done was i oh here we go i had taken um something i think from a powerpoint some words and i just control c the words and then i control v and i put them in here and there was gaps to fill and that um let me uh, that creates let me see if i can find it um uh, so like this kind of thing that creates can you see can you see the tiny line if i just can you see the tiny line there yeah so if the students then move their page mm. you see how the words that they've written yeah. Yeah. move so that's why it's often better to embed a document and to set it as a background because that way I mean, I do prefer it. It looks better this way. It looks nicer. But then if they change anything, there can be um, conflicting issues. I think I might have missed, perhaps I'm not understanding this because Helen has said they can write it on it. I, I had said they can write on it if you set it as a background. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So I don't know if I've said something, if, if I've not understood. So Helen, if you want to open up your mic and say, if I've confused things, <laughs> and I'll try and um, resolve that. Um, while you're opening your... Oh, are you there, Helen? Yes, uh, it was really just because you were asking Jane why... Well, somebody was asking why she set it as a background document, and I'd written it down, so I went back and, looked oh. and I was just putting that in to be helpful. Oh, you said that. All. that. all right. <laughs> I thought it was sort of, well, you said that. No, no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't a few days. <laughs> Thanks so much, Helen. Okay, Thank thanks. you. <laughs> Right, we're on to the last six questions here, I think. Um, oh no, only four. No, three. Do you, yes. Do you have a master notebook per year and then do you distribute it to your teams? Yes. French year seven master notebook, French year eight master notebook, French year nine master notebook, French GCSE master notebook. Yeah, we do. And I think this is something where for those of us thinking at the moment how to do this quickly with yeah. schools, this may well be a way of sharing the workload, mind it? So Yeah, definitely. Now, I mean, you don't have to do, teachers don't have to do that work individually, you know, you can just yeah. share it out, can't you? Yeah, and I think if particularly now people would understand and want to work together on that. Um, oh, this was, uh, no, Laura, Laura asked this, and I think she asked this when you were showing the immersive reader, how do you change the language, please? So I don't know if Laura's yeah. still here, but I think that was what. Learning tools. Uh, no, 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 no. So select your vocabulary. She's Go still here. Laura's still here. <laughs> okay. Go to review, language, set proofing language. I would like it to be French. And there we go. Otherwise, it's awful. If you set it to English United States, for example, firstly, you oh, know. Oh, no. And then you go to Learning Tools Immersive Reader. Oh, it's awful. 
It's going to do it in an English accent, is it? Here we go. What will you have it to? Yes, Lamos from but, Zay. Zona but they'll do this for a joke, won't they? I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I guess, it's fun. But eventually it's fine, you know. Okay, there are other things here. Can we have a webinar on MS Whiteboard? Or oh, loads of ideas here that we will carry on. Um, but I think, you know, now that it's nearly 10, to, you've been going for two, nearly two hours or so, a picture dictionary, lots of things that we can do. I mean, is that, is that, is picture, Joe, is that the, you can open up your mic, Joe, if you like. Is that the idea that we can do that another time? We can do a bit more on that or now? Um, well, or I, know that there's the, I know there's the picture dictionary option in an immersive reader. Oh, so we could just show that now? I don't I know if you know how to do that, Jane, but um, um, I've seen that in English, but I've not seen that in, uh, if it's possible to do that in uh, Yeah, it languages. is, it is. My problem is I've I've got an issue with my OneNote 2016. I need to uninstall and install something. Um, so, but anyway, I've gone to my OneNote for Windows 10, and the immersive reader works there. As well, so I'm just read. I'm just reading the chat there from Elizabeth without being too impatient. When approximately will the session on Tuesday be? I'm I'm feeling like that as well, Elizabeth. At the moment, it's almost. <gasps> let's just let's do this. I think we'll have to find out when Jane is free, and. Um, so it should, there we go. Awesome. So how, can you just show how you enable that? Lisa. Um, well, it just works in Immersive Reader. Okay. So you, you highlight the text, you launch Immersive Reader, and then Picture Dictionary comes up automatically. Is that right? Yeah. Or do you have to enable? Okay. I, did, I didn't do anything to make that work. Or well, let's have a look at functions up here. Grammar options. Yep, there's the grammar options, reading preferences, the same stuff as the other one, as um, as in twenty as in twenty sixteen. But and actually, if I hold the, um, if I click on that, oh, because I've set it to French, it doesn't give me. Why doesn't it give me a picture? I saw the picture then. No, for un poisson, but for a fish. Right, so because you've got the language set to French, it only recognises pictures for the French words, not the English words. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it? not very clever, is it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit disappointed with the dictate function because I think it's being a bit too clever now. Mm. You know, uh, the whole benefit of dictation for us as linguists is that if they don't speak correctly... So you want it to answer back and go, quoi? Quoi? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really pleased you've shown that, um, Jane, because I know a lot of uh, people in the MFL Twitter RT have talked about um, Immersive Reader being a game changer. So I think that's really clear now how yeah. it can be helpful. That's brilliant. Thank Definitely. you. Really good. I mean, well, one of the things with Dictate, which I found really good, even with older girls, is when they're watching a video, if they set, they put the video from YouTube, they insert a video into the OneNote, and then they click Dictate, and whatever's being said will dictate underneath. And so then they can read it, which is really amazing, I think. If that makes well, sense. It, it, this all is amazing. Um, is it all right if I wrap it up? I've got one thing to say to wrap it up, unless anybody else wants to to anything. I mean, really, we've just got loads and loads of ideas. I can see that. And in a way, what I suggest, um, Jane, is that if Joe, Jane, if I get together and see when you're available to do some of these um, supplementary things, that would be fantastic. Because I suppose in some ways it is, it's the spring break. There may be some people who are using it to have a break. Um, quite a lot of people, though, are thinking, well, actually, I'd like to get ahead of the game and find out about things because let's face it for some of us this is this is a bit of a, a bit of a hobby as well isn't it as well as a job it's, yeah i love finding out about this and i can see that here as well but i thought i'd just leave to the end but someone wrote and you might not have seen someone who said my initial question was why would you go with microsoft instead of google now i can see why so oh, much um, exciting times indeed so i think as far as putting your achievement code in you ought to go right to the top now of whatever master no, mistress of microsoft should be <laughs> yeah so i i need you know i need a lot uh 400 i need to train 400 people so there at least there are 100 people tonight you've so had 100 good. times an hour so that's yeah. it you're done i'm done i'm done <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much. Really, really amazing. Thanks for asking me. Joe, do you want to say anything more? And then I'll, I'll stop the recording. 
No, I think it's been absolutely yeah. fantastic. I, I think having a follow up session would be brilliant. And uh, yeah. thank you so much to uh, to Jane for sharing in, in such a clear, um, explicit way, showing everybody and people will be able to watch the video back and, and learn uh, at, in their own time during the, the break. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much, Jane, on behalf of Tilt and AWL. Pleasure. Thanks thank for you. asking me. And if anybody who's there who'd like to open up their videos now that, so that we can see you, that would be really nice as a little, a little ending. Hey, well We've got Joe there. We've got coming. Isabel there. It's lovely to see hey, you. Hey, Isabel. Nice Is to see you, Isabel. And you can open your audio as well. Dan's Hi. there. Thank you very Hello. much. Hello. See you <laughs> there, Laura. Cheers. <laughs> oh, hi, Dan. Nice to see you. Hi, Jay. Great, Dan. Yeah, you, we need you for a session as well. If anybody would like to do a session, that'd be lovely. Jane, so, I just put on the chat as much I love your quiz, let move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the room that it happened. Oh, it was I could, good. I could really relate to that. It's so catchy. <laughs> I know. I'm going to make a Spotify playlist of all the songs for Who, Quizlet, so I can dance to it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, can you make sure that you all put your own Quizlet moves on okay. Twitter? I really want to see your moves. Okay. I thought it was brilliant. Really good. And the children must have loved it seeing it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they did. Thank you so much for asking me, Helen, for organising this. It's brilliant. Well, and Joe, of course, is the one who sort of he's got us all <laughs> no together worries. so that we know each other, which is great. So no worries. My thanks pleasure. Thanks so much. Okay, so I might uh, share. Oh, I might pause to stop the recording now. So bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.